Try your hardest, they say. It fetches results. Yeah, like what? Complaints and insults. Your work is amazing, it really is, but I must point out these 83 things. This is wrong. That's trash. What were you thinking? Just trying to impress you, and now my confidence is shrinking. That was an excerpt from a poem I wrote for the school newspaper years ago. My writing was based on an old but persistent fear I have developed. A telephobia, or as it is more commonly known, the fear of imperfection. And this fear grew and developed because I was told the same thing my whole life. You have the potential to do it. You don't want to. Do you know how ridiculous that sounds? That's like telling a sunflower, you have the potential to become a rose. You're just not trying hard enough. And I know what this looks like. The girl on stage with styled hair and three layers of makeup on is talking about perfection. But trust me when I say, I seldom look this put together. Take a look at this photograph. Typical class photo, right? Well, almost. If you haven't already, take a moment to find me in the photograph. Don't worry, it's not a difficult task, rather quite the contrary. Found me. Easy, wasn't it? Kind of impossible to ignore the one bleach white shirt standing amongst a sea of the same shade of blues. That, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly how I feel in any social situation. Alien. And this instance of alienation was the result of the washing machine shrinking my shirt three sizes too small, forcing me to wear the white one. And I thought, hey, maybe the difference won't be so stark. But I was horribly wrong, because I stood out like a smudge on a blank canvas. This effect of standing out is a pattern I've seen emerge in my life. Some examples include, one, we were given a writing task to describe anything we wanted to choose as a topic. Most people wrote about sunny days and cherished memories, holding hands with your best friend as you skipped through the park. And I wrote about how love is a toxin. Two. I was sent for a literature competition a while back, and after the rounds had collapsed, the judge asked us for book recommendations. Most people recommended books on romance, self-help. Someone even recommended a book on how to get rich. I recommended a novel where a woman has to apartment sit a flat in a luxurious building, which is actually a secret cult. Three, I am a somewhat decent artist, and I get to do it in between my periods of constant work. Most artists draw things like hyperrealistic portraits or crystals or balloon animals when they have enough time to sit down and do it, just because of the amount of concentration they require. My sketchbook is filled with bloody eyes, screaming shadows, and skeleton hands. Much to the dismay of my mother, who will probably never open the book again. And if these instances haven't already convinced you that my life is just one big game of spotting the difference, let me address the fact that even my birth wasn't perfect. I was due early to mid-August, but my birthday falls mid-July because I was the result of an emergency C-section. I had choked myself on the umbilical cord, and as a result of it, there was no oxygen getting to me. And that led me to stop moving in the womb, which is what led my mother to rush to the hospital. Survival rates for emergency C-sections are low. And they were even lower almost 16 years back, which meant that there was no guarantee I was going to survive. But hey, it gives me hope. If that little girl could survive a near-death experience on pure determination, surely I can survive my telephobia. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to win any sympathy points by telling you this. I'm just trying to prove a point. I have resented being the lone wolf in a world of sheep my whole life. Except this wolf was scared of the sheep, not the other way around. I cared what the sheep think. I wanted the sheep to like me. So what did I do? I skinned the wool of the sheep whose demeanors and personalities I admired most, and I wore it around, trying to blend in with the flock. The flaw in my plan, it's not going to work. 
simply because it never has. Just like a snake can shed its skin, I can shed my oddness. But at the end of the day, the snake's a snake and I'm still an oddball. Stop trying to change yourselves. More importantly, stop trying to change other people. We were not supposed to be born perfect. If that were true, the world would consist of Barbies and Kens. But it doesn't. So what I don't get is why we're trying to oppose nature here. Tell me, Father, which to ask forgiveness for, what I am or what I am not. Tell me, Mother, which I should regret, what I became or what I didn't. No more apologies. No more regret. Perfection ends today. Perfection ends with us. Perfection ends with you. And perfection ends with me. Perfection ends. Thank you.